Okay, everybody, we took this week off, but we're going to share one of our classic episodes. Enjoy. Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Collin II, and with me, as always, is... Is Matthew Monster Mash Haas. That's a great name. The Monster... Oh, Monster Marshmallow. Nah. Now, is Monster Mash, would that be like a... Uh, like, like... A bunch of monsters serving in a medical unit in the Korean War. Um, that would be pretty cool. That, that would actually be a kind of a cool idea for like a comedy sketch. Yes. Or I was thinking too of Monster Mash. Would it be just like a bunch of monsters like cooked into like a mash, like mashed potatoes or whatever? Yeah. Or would the marshmallows from the cereal? be kind of mashed up so it's kind of like you're eating a mash of monster themed um cereals so the monsters are okay they're not they're not dead or anything you're not you're not eating up you're just eating marshmallows that are kind of mashed together that's better than eating monsters because yeah i would say so especially blueberry Monster, Booberry monsters are high in cholesterol i hear yeah it's why you yeah you, know, you shouldn't eat them that often but I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so um <laughs> so today on the show we are covering the history of General Mills Monster Cereals. <laughs> it's the fiftieth anniversary this year, Matt. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> Five oh. Interestingly enough, in March of 1971, the first two cereals in the line were introduced. Yeah, not not not, not uh, you know, in the fall, but <laughs> in March. Okay, that's weird. Oh, maybe, maybe they. We're trying to lead up to yeah. How that's a long time though. That's like seven months. So because I'm not sure. I think they may have actually been a year round cereal at one point, and then became seasonal. Yeah, but still, I I would have introduced it around Halloween. Yeah, as the, like the opening. You know what I mean? Like, but hey, whatever. Um, I was marketing back in 71, you know, I and mean, that was the era of diet pills and um, sleazy business execs, you know, so that was just a different time, I guess. And Count Chocula. <laughs> yeah. And Frankenberry. <laughs> yes. So the first two of them were introduced back then. Um, there was the chocolate flavored Count Chocula and the strawberry flavored Frankenberry. Yeah, so good. So in the two commercials, Count Alfred Chocula. He has a first name. <laughs> <laughs> and Frankenberry would engage in comic bickering over which cereal was better when something or someone else interfered in their verbal sparring <laughs> and then would scare them because they were like, monsters but they were scared you get it yep kind of like monsters inc i think they probably stole that from these commercials mm -hmm. a little bit um um general mills should sue monsters inc or whoever made it uh, so um so that there was um okay in um <laughs> so 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 okay so so with uh these cereals you know, they, they've been around for 50 years now, and they're normally seasonal. Um, they normally are around from September 1st until October 31st. 
And we have three of them that are out every year, which are Count Chocula, Frankenberry, and Booberry. Oh, God. I love Booberry. Yeah, Booberry's good. Um, <laughs> there used to be two other ones. Fruit Brute, <laughs> which, uh, which the mascot was a werewolf. And Fruity Yummy Mummy. Which, obviously, the, you know, mascot was a mummy. Yeah. Um, those are both discontinued, except for sometimes in limited productions. So I want to get Fruit Brute. Yeah. There was a few years ago they did have them out again. Um, but, yeah, it's hard to come by. Damn, I wonder if they got boxes that are, and they're probably not any good, even if they... Did yeah, I don't think I'd eat. I don't tail. think I'd eat a box from like ten years ago or anything if I were you. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> it's not worth it. Um, so, um, interesting fact here with our history, as we're going through the chronological history of the cereals, in February of 1972, Frankenberry cereal included an indigestible, indigestible pigment that turns some children's feces pink <laughs> a symptom referred to as frankenberry stool <laughs> yeah they they were then re reformatted to uh remove this pigment <laughs> <laughs> yep it's crazy yeah weren't they like Weren't parents, like, taking their kids to, like, the ER and shit for that because they didn't know what was going on? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> wow. it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's weird, though. I swear, like, with uh, some cereal today, even, like, um, I, I'm pretty sure, like, anytime you eat crunch berries, your, your, your stool turns green. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's certain, um, I forgot what it is, but, yeah, there's certain, and, like, um, so apparently... <laughs> people don't really care about that because probably because people know now back mm -hmm. then they didn't know so they were freaking out like what the hell is going on like so yeah. now like people don't really care because they're like oh it's the food die whatever yeah which is kind of scary but um the <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> they were just okay with that exactly we're like yeah whatever it is, what it is. the um so booberry was first introduced in um, December of 1973. And then uh, Fruit Brute was introduced in 1974. And then Fruit Brute was discontinued in 1982 and replaced in 1988 by Fruity Yummy Mummy. Yeah, those assholes. Which was I mean, which was then discontinued in 1992. <laughs> I don't know what's with the, what's with fruity. I mean, like personally, I like fruit flavored cereal. So maybe, maybe I'm like the minority here. I guess chocolate's all the rage or whatever. But like, I kind of like the idea of like a burst of fruit, you know, in the morning. I mean, God forbid you actually eat a piece of fruit in the morning. That'd be too stupid, cereal. man. I don't know why anybody would do that, you know. I know, why would you do that, you know? But you want to eat cereal that mimics a taste of fruit, but is actually more addictive and artificial than, than real fruit. So, you know, that's what I would do, personally. But they took all my fruit-flavored cereals that I never actually ate in the first place, and I'm, like, have a nostalgia for a time and experience that I never actually had, because, like, I think with my family, I think the only monster cereal they ever got was Count Chocula. I don't even think they even got Frankenberry. Now that I think about it, I think I would actually prefer Frankenberry to Count Chocula because I'm just not a huge fan of chocolate flavored cereal. So, yeah, my yeah. favorite is Ch Count Chocula, though. So I don't know. <laughs> well, that's cool. Because that's just because I like chocolate. I was actually eating some earlier today. Some that's Count cool. Chocula. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't buy any uh, Frankenberry or Booberry this year yet. Hopefully, uh, there's still some on the shelves that I can buy. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, I probably want to get at least one of each. Um, not like that one dude who 
is he from Utah or whatever? He he's like a huge hardcore blueberry fan. He buys like literally like hundreds of boxes of the shit and basically just stocks them up because apparently they're good until June of that same year. Oh, okay. So he just buys like like a hundred boxes of this shit. <laughs> and then just eats them until June and then he has to wait until September to get more. I guess so. I mean, yeah, I saw a video of him. I just like, he just has like a whole shopping cart full of blueberry <laughs> and like he'll go multiple times a week to like stock up, you know, and he wears like a blueberry shirt and like a hat and he's got like blueberry, like memor not memorabilia, just um, whatever you call it, paraphernalia, whatever. Yeah, well, memorabilia um, would work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, memorabilia. Uh, he's got like a website that has something to do with. Boob it's just a whole, yeah, it's a whole thing. Um, we'll have to look that up. Um, and yeah. maybe share it in the show notes. Um, yeah. so uh, in in two thousand and ten, Betty Crocker had um released a Frankenberry and Booberry fruit roll ups. <laughs> mm. And then General Mills released Count Chocula cereal bars. That's not, that's not, that yeah. sounds odd. Mm -hmm. In, uh, in, uh, 2010, or since 2010, I should say, Frankenberry, Blueberry, and Count Chocula cereals have been manufactured and sold only for a few months during the autumn Halloween seasons in September and October. Um, you can uh, you can still find like the information about them year round on General Mills website, but they're only sold temporarily for the last you know eleven years. So, hmm. but before that, they were year round, I guess. So, but I don't remember them. So, <laughs> um, in uh, in the year 2013, in August, General Mills released all five monster cereals for purchase during the Halloween season. Um, both Fruit Brute, which was uh, being released for the first time in 31 years, and Fruity Yummy Yum, Yummy Mummy, that's hard to say, um, which <laughs> was being released for the first time in 21 years, um, received updated uh, packaging like the other cereals and the Fruit Brute variant was renamed Fruit Brute. It was F R U T E instead of F R U I T Brute. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah man. They really you know they re so I got another question. This is this is not really related to monster but cereals, yeah. but it is cereal. So in my mind, there was a time where Fruit Loops was spelled like the real word flute fruit not just with two o's but was it always with two o's am i just thinking that there was a time where it was just spelled correctly it's one of those uh mandela effect things okay it's always been spelled that way okay yep yep um the uh so in um So, so basically that year in uh, 2013 that they released all five monster cereals um, they received updated packaging um, so they were all like in a you know new cool packaging um, yeah man <laughs> um, the uh, there was a special retro editions though of the original packaging art, which would be sold exclusively at Target stores. So, mm. in 2014, General Mills enlisted the help of DC Comics to create new designs for the serials in time for the Halloween. Uh, the designs revealed, revealed on August 6th consisted of Booberry design by Jim Lee, a Count Chocula designed by Terry Dodson, and a Frankenberry designed by Dave Johnson, um, all uh, DC Comics uh, creators. Um, mm -hmm. In uh, 2021, that's this year, to uh, celebrate the 50th anniversary of an introduction of monster serials, um, they 
created a new cereal called Monster Mash, which included all of the different cereals mashed together. Yeah. You you can get that exclusively at Target, I believe. I'm not. That's the only place I've heard that you can get it. Um, I might that's be wrong on that. That's a whole lot of flavor. Yeah, that's a whole lot of flavor. <laughs> yeah, I just don't know about the mixture of chocolate and blueberry and, and <laughs> strawberry and, and yeah, uh, and not not fruit fruit though. Just those three. No, it was like all. Um, I believe it's all five. Oh, five? Yeah. Oh, geez. Well, that would probably overpower because Fruit Brew and Yummy Mummy are pretty much the same thing. So that would yeah. like overpower all the other fruit. Yeah. Pla- okay. Wow. Maybe it's done in moderation on each of those. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to take a quick break here, Matt, and we'll talk more about this uh, fun cereal? Yeah, I just I gotta eat a, a bowl of my non existent Frankenberry right now. Okay. Non existent Frankenberry. That's the name of my uh, new band. <laughs> cool. Yes. We'll be right back, folks. What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice Podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And, as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guests every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry you can find us on apple spotify pretty much wherever you get your podcast hope to see you there And we are back. Back in black. Back in black. <laughs> and, um so um some some like side notes about this that was like the rundown of the history of the serials. Um here's some yeah. uh rundown of uh like some little side notes and stuff. Um there were like witty commercials that they had. Um, Count Chocula and Frankenberry appeared in a series of television commercials together um, over the decades. Uh, the cartoon versions um, of Count Chocula, whose uh, first name, as we said, was revealed to be Alfred, was loosely based on horror movie actor Bella Lugosi. So his voice was like somebody doing a, an imitation of Bella Lugosi. Mm-hmm. The, uh, I want to suck your blood kind of voice, you know, <laughs> um, the, uh, and uh, Frankenberry was uh, the uh, actor did a kind of a Boris Karloff sort of uh, voice. Um, most of the uh, commercials, um, which were aimed at young children, featured uh, the two serial mascots arguing lightheartedly over which cereal was the best. Um, so engrossed in their debate that they didn't notice a person, usually a child, approaching them. In an ironic twist, the commercial would end up with the child scaring the monsters. Yeah, you get it? Yeah. Or cats or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when Boo Berry came, see, this is like it made me mad. Okay, so Boo Berry comes along a few a couple of years later, and he's like this sweet, you know, cute ghost. And they're always like, you know, trying to shut him away you know, like oh boop it's like you know you guys are pieces of shit here okay like mm-hmm. 
this this ghost just wants to be part of your little group here and you know guess what it just makes me want to eat booberry more than what you guys got because you're being so mean to him yeah and he was and and booberry was voiced by uh by the legendary paul freeze who uh does a lot of he did a lot of voices at disney world and for disney stuff and everything too so you know he's like a lot of the voices in the haunted mansion are done by him so so that's a little known fact yep. <laughs> um yeah the uh um what were you talking about there was like a time where people were upset over the uh you were telling me on break that people were upset about a formulation change that they had in the serial at one point oh yeah i already forgot about that jeez um yeah so it was originally oat and then they switched to corn probably because it was cheaper because that's all they care about and um yeah people noticed you know straight away when they because it just you know oat tastes different than corn and um there there are some people now who are so like obsessed with like the original um you know ingredients they'll actually i mean i wouldn't do this but they'll get like oat cereal and then they'll just pick out the marshmallows like individually out of, i mean come on how much time do you have in your hands to do something like this but then they'll mix it up and then they'll have the original which i'm not even sure how that's possible though because some of these cereals the like the flavor is like part of the actual cereal itself you know what i mean not just marshmallows like yeah because the so, like, like like with count chocula the it's 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 oat pieces but they're chocolate flavored oat pieces you know so, right yeah and there's marshmallows in it but so mm-hmm. i don't know how they do they spray on the powder who knows i mean yeah there are some people who go to such lengths because they're so obsessed or whatever but um mm-hmm. yeah i mean because a lot of things switch to corn at some point like corn syrup and um, instead of like cane sugar, you know, like with sodas back in the day, or pop, or however you, I say soda because I like the way it sounds better. But um, me too. Uh, just I just like I just like the way it sounds. Soda it just it sounds cool. But um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it was, it was around that time I think where everybody was just because it's cheaper. You know, you can make so much stuff out of corn, but you know, kind of sacrifices the flavor because some things just. I mean, think about it you're going to eat corn flakes would you rather have oat flakes i mean if you like oat flakes sure but if you want corn flakes and then you get oat flakes you know what i mean it's just it's different yeah it's a it it's it's a different taste (laughs) completely um so uh yeah and 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 speaking i mean of those those the psycho people who just eat the marshmallows (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, <all> marshmallows. <laughs> yeah um if you really like just marshmallows especially like if you're the type of person that just eats the marshmallows and like lucky charms they do <clears throat> they do now sell bags of just the marshmallows i figure they will because now we live in an age where everything yeah is like a gift now but when i was a kid i think i, I probably told a story at least a couple of times on this podcast because we, we've been doing it for like Eighteen thousand years but but uh <laughs> no, yes <not> really. um <laughs> well now I, I was 12 or maybe 11 or 12 and i was um and like it was like one of those things where like a whole week of school was canceled because of like a snowstorm or whatever and um i was at my friend's house during the whole time and we went to eat breakfast like you know on monday or whatever it was and the whole the whole box of cereal was marshmallows this is a long time ago this is before they would do anything like that intentionally yeah. uh, but we're just freaking out like like it was like the coolest thing ever like literally just the entire bag i think it was lucky charms of just marshmallows like that's all it was like they somehow and, like, screwed up when they packaged it yeah because this again you know because i'm you know i'm kind of older so like i'm we're talking like 1995 94 here yeah. so like um when this happened which i'm sure back then like that was before like everything became a gimmick like oh we're gonna have a uh, doritos with nothing but cheese just like flowing through the bag or we're gonna <laughs> you know, whatever it is just something you know like everything's like a gimmick now oh we're gonna have oreos with nothing but the cream or 
you know, nothing but the cookie. Okay, so it's just like a regular cracker, like a cookie cracker. Gotcha. Okay. Um, <laughs> they already sell these. It's not like that's not a, a thing. Or you know what's interesting? No, the one thing they don't sell as a gimmick is the one thing that actually makes sense because it's not even a gimmick is extra cheese packets for macaroni and cheese because there's never enough cheese ever in a, a box of macaroni and cheese. What whatever brand you get. It's never enough cheese. You need at least, I wouldn't say you don't, you don't need a whole bag extra, mm-hmm. probably at least a quarter, maybe a half bag extra if you're if that extra spicy, but, um, but you need more, but they don't sell that as far as I know, extra bags of cheese. That's actually a, a, a that's actually a huge of actually, utility. Um, what's that? Actually. Uh Oh, actually. Um, you can buy like Velveeta cheese, like the, like in sauce, like cheese sauce. Well, I don't mean liquid. I mean like the powder kind. Oh, the powder kind. Oh, no, not that. Yeah, I thought you meant like with the like with the Velveeta, like um the shells and cheese and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least that's because they got the right idea. But mm-hmm. yeah, they don't sell. I I guess technically you could um you could just use like um like the popcorn flavor stuff with you know and just use that as extra cheese. Yeah. Maybe. Or but, just um, get fancy and get the shells and cheese, which are better. They are, but sometimes I'm in the mood for just regular mac and cheese. Oh, I know. I, mean, I like shells and cheese a lot. It's good, but um, or you really get the good. or you get the fancy mac and cheese that has the liquid, the the, the like you know liquid <laughs> cheese sauce. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, the Velveeta mm-hmm. shells and cheese. Or, yeah, or um, the, or the, they got the regular like you know mac and cheese too, like the cheese. Craft cheese deluxe or something. I like those a lot. You mm-hmm. see, that? I like I like the powder cheese more than the the look. I don't know what it is. <laughs> like the way it mixes into it, yeah, it seems like it um, mixes better than the liquid kind, which doesn't make any sense really. But like <laughs> I don't know, it seems like the liquid kind's too thick, and yeah. you have to keep stirring it and stirring it. You end up like getting arm muscles just from stirring. Which, you know, I guess I could use a little bit more arm muscle, but whatever. Anyway. I mean, speaking uh, of shells and cheese, I got the, like, little, the little, um, fast, easy Mac shells and cheese stuff, um, Velveeta, whatever, I, you pop in the microwave. Oh, those are good. I had some of those today, and I made some turkey bacon and put a bunch of little bacon pieces in it. Oh, that was good. Oh, yeah, that is, that is really good. Good little yeah, fast yeah. snack, you know. Anyway, yeah. so, back to cereal. Um, <laughs> maybe a little bit of broccoli on the side you get some veggies going on and <laughs> <laughs> so um <clears throat> so um what else uh like and any other uh, interesting facts you ran across uh, about uh the cereal here uh if i can remember yeah i think i just remember the you know how you know, they treated, you know, Booberry like a piece of shit, you know, because they thought they were better than him, even though his cereal is probably better than Frankenberry's, really. And, um, oh, they did kind of, they, well, you, were, you already kind of mentioned this already when they kind of, they kind of softened the edges of their faces, like, several times throughout, like, yeah. the evolution, like, especially Count Chocula, because he kind of, had a scary looking kind of face originally and they kind of made him like like a smooth face i don't know they did it for all of them but him especially and um especially in 2013 when they brought all five back together they kind of had like this i don't know almost disney like type of look to him yeah yeah so um another a little interesting fact here is uh the um Sometime between 1998 and 2000, General Mills considered a new mixed berry cereal for their line. An employee at, at uh, Sachi and Sachi, the company um, that acquired uh, Dancer Fitzgerald, uh, the um, the company that had created the characters for the cereal line, mm-hmm. um, drew designs for four potential additions to the monster cereal family. The creepy candidates were Barry Petra, a mummy lady, <laughs> Phantom Barry, 
who is like based on the Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Dr. Um, Jekyllberry, a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. <laughs> Hyde sort of thing. And then the Bride of Frankenberry. <laughs> Wow. And but but alas, none of these um saw the light of day. <laughs> or the night of day as it may be. <laughs> and, <laughs> Wait, wasn't there also a, a monster serial or at least they they were they made a what was nineteen sixty one? But it wasn't I might think of something else, I don't know. Um I thought they made uh, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm thinking I'm getting something wrong, mixing things up. Um, so I thought I read somewhere that was it the, the first like mascot? I guess cereal was it the Tricks Bunny, like in 1959 or something. Oh, okay. that wasn't like a monster at all. That was um, yeah. I'm not sure what I, the first uh, mascot was. Um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of mixing two different things up right now, so. So, um, you are back. So, um, what do you, uh, what do you think of the idea that they, what, what they started doing like 11 years ago where they only do it, where they only release these cereals in the fall or whatever you want to call it around, uh, Halloween? Uh, you know, I'm not really big on the whole like seasonal stuff. Like, yeah. I mean, I think you should be able to eat what you want all year round. Like, I mean, like the same thing with Wendy. Well, I don't even think Wendy's even has this at all anymore, but it was my favorite sandwich was it was like melted cheese on like the hamburger and it had like mushrooms, I think, too. Yeah. And they don't, I don't think that was, that was always around like February when they do that. And now I don't even think they do it at all anymore. But like I always thought, like this is such a good item. People love it. Why do you only have it for like a month every year? It just seems kind of weird. But yeah, it's like um, I, it's it's like the the McRib sort of thing, you know, where they only release it every so often. It makes it special or something. Like the my my uh my go to for the special things that they release once a year is the is um. Is around uh, Easter when they released the uh, Cadbury mini eggs. Oh yeah, not the cream eggs because those are ugh, whatever. Um, but the, the mini eggs are great. The mini ones, yeah, yeah, I know those are so little, good. Little candy covered chocolate, oh, so good. Um, it's the coating, yeah, the coating that makes oh, yeah. it special. And kind of reminds me of the M and M's that are kind of like that too. Yeah, but these are so much better than M and M's. Um, <laughs> but they. You know, when they release these things just every once in a while, it gives them this sort of like, uh, I don't know, it gives them a nostalgia built in and it also gives them sort of a special thing like, oh, I got to get these now or whatever. I mean, I'm they probably wouldn't be as cool if you had monster cereal year round. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, like imagine if McDonald's only sold French fries like for like three months out of the year, you know? <laughs> yeah, they'd be like, really, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they'd be stupid to do, but yeah, it'd be <laughs> I know, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, yeah, um, it's just, it, it, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just crazy um, that they only release them this time of year, but I understand it, um, but I guess when we were kids, you could get them all the time, and I just don't you remember get them all this. the time. But plus, too, now there's so many different cereals that yeah. maybe we just don't want to have to have three extra cereals that they have to produce all year round or something. Yeah, like that, plus so. you know there's limited space on a shelf in stores. You know, even though the stores are getting bigger, you still only have limited amount of space in the cereal aisle. Yeah. Um, the. Uh, so, uh, so basically, I guess, uh, I guess, um, Fruit Brute <laughs> appeared in, uh, in Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. 
<laughs> so wow. I guess those really those cereals appeared in there, so that that's an interesting little fact. <clears throat> um well, wait, what what is what is Pulp Fiction actually technically take place in a uh, certain year or is it like kind of left in the open of like when it's, it it's an, take place? I think it takes place in the year that it came out in like 94 oh. or 93 or whatever. So, so yeah. Been, <laughs> yeah. But 12 years after. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Unless that person or whoever has a cereal is like save that box or whatever. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> but but it's you know it's it's in Tarantino's own little world too, so things are kind of different there. Oh yeah, yeah. True. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, any other uh, final thoughts here on um, the monster cereals before we wrap things up here, Matthew? You, Matthew? Uh, <laughs> no, just um. Just, you know, get get a box for yourself if you want, you know, one before they, you know, discontinue them, whatever. Because, um, you know, you still got 20 days or so. So if, you, if you're in the mood for some Count Chocula, you know, chocolate cereal, Count Chocula is probably a lot better than the, the chocolate pebbles um, cereal. Cocoa pebbles? Those are good too, no, though, man. I, I think Count Chocula is probably better, but um, I know. But <laughs> you remember that time when we got Fruity Pebbles? We had like a weird hankering for Fruity Pebbles. Oh yeah, and we just like drove the mire at like two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um. So I uh, I did ask on our in in our group um. about uh about the cereals and got some responses um what people's favorites were and stuff like that uh this guy matthew hunter uh said um they made the monster mash box with them all in it um but why not bring out yummy mummy and fruit brute separate like they do the main three that's a good question like why haven't they done it that often you know exactly i wonder I wonder if a fruit flavored cereal is not as popular as, well, I guess blueberry is a fruit. I, I guess like cherry, like, you know, like, um, what's the word? Like fruit that kind of like is bursting with fruit, I guess maybe is not as like popular as like more subtle flavors like blueberry or frankenberry or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, I I just wish they would bring them all back. Like, again, just, you know, you think for the 50th anniversary they would have, or maybe they will for the anniversaries of those particular cereals, you know? Yeah. Um, Steve Savo said that uh, Fruit Brute is his favorite. Um, nice. So much better than Yummy Mummy. <laughs> 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 then Boo Berry, then Count Chocula, and Frankenberry is a distant fifth. My mother wanted to know if uh, she bought that cereal for me as a child. But I don't remember. <laughs> Which one? Any of them. <laughs> you don't remember any of <laughs> I don't remember if my mom bought any of these for me as a kid. Um, I mean, she probably did. They're pretty much like probably in every household probably or, you know, at least some of the time. Yeah, and... uh There's a our friend Allison Dow for the show. She says uh, um, there's a website where you can buy um, masks of the characters too to wear for Halloween. Hmm. She shared That's it cool. on there, so I might share that in our notes. If not, check our group, our Facebook group out, and you can check that there. Um, yeah, but uh, but yeah, it's it's like my favorite is probably count chocula but that's just because i'm a basic bitch and um <laughs> the um <laughs> it's just me <laughs> i don't know what uh what's your favorite matt <laughs> um of the see, the, of the three that we get that is <laughs> the thing is is i only remember ever remember having count chocula but I think, of course, maybe back then that's what I wanted, you know, because mm -hmm. people taste change. But like, 
for now, like I would rather get Frankenberry and Blueberry personally. Yeah. So I'm thinking I probably only had Count Chocula as a kid. I don't ever remember eating Frankenberry or Blueberry. Ever, yeah. So I don't know. Well, hopefully. <laughs> We can try them all out before the end of the year, <laughs> end of the season, that is. And then, um, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe we we need to we need to a write write in campaign to General Mills to bring back Fruit Brute and Yummy Mummy. Okay, yeah, do mm-hmm. it. So, General Mills, if you're listening, and I know you are because you listen to every <laughs> episode of All Too Real Two, and um. I don't know who General Mills is. Is that a person? Is he in the army? Yeah, General Mills. <laughs> he works at the mill. Yeah. And, uh, no. But anyways, um, <laughs> hopefully uh, you guys can enjoy yourself a nice bowl of that cereal while you're listening to this or anytime you want until the end of the month. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Make sure you, uh, while you're reading that serial, you go and uh, check out all2real2.com. Follow us um, on all the social meds. And. Uh, the meds. Yes. Um, check out our Patreon. Check out our T Public. You can get some cool, uh, you know, cool shirts and cool uh, products with our logo on it. Um, also. Um, Give us a five star review on Apple Podcast or anywhere that you can review us, um, because that helps uh, people find the show. As well as you know, make sure you get vaxxed, wear a mask, mm-hmm. um, wear a condom, and until next time, folks. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real Two Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com.